What's up guys, Ali Nadam here with another tutorial Thursday. Today I'm gonna to be talking about tips and tricks to improve your workflow with the mixer. So I'm gonna jump inside a project that I've been working on and show you guys some of the tips and um, methods I use to move around things faster, copy things, and uh, how you can make things look easier on your eyes and just make everything more organized and improve your workflow. So let's jump right in. So here we have a project I am working on and I'm just gonna show you right off the bat um, things that I would do to improve my workflow. Um, this project does have a lot of tracks. I'm really OCD with organizing things and renaming things how I like. So there are some tricks that you can do to improve and speed up the way you work. Uh, let's start first by coloring uh, mixer tracks. So to color a mixer track easily, just uh, click on them or move your left and right arrow keys. When you land on one that you like, for instance, this one, FX Fire, just go ahead and press F2 and you can rename it. You can also give it a new color. So let's say you wanna give effects, I don't know, yellow. You like yellow, you hit yellow or you can define a custom color, hit enter. So how can you change the color of multiple mixer tracks at once? Because you know it's gonna take a lot of time to change all of these. So go ahead and um, hold left control. And while holding the left control, left click on the mixer tracks that you want, you'll see them highlight. At this point, you can go ahead and again hit F2 and you can see that our recently used color will be shown here, yellow. So hit yellow, hit enter, and there you have it. Um, kind of looks like an eyesore, but it does show the point there so you can change the color of them simultaneously. So let's show you another method. Let's say um, you're mastering something and you need headroom for these tracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color back because uh, this is a bit of an eyesore. I'm gonna put them on blue. With these selected the same way, you can actually drag the volume meter down and you'll see them all move down. Now the beauty of this is that, let's say one of these was a bit louder, you know, this one's a bit louder. When you select everything, it actually moves them with those in, in check. So you're not actually gonna make them all the same. If you had some small adjustments, they'll move together at the same rate so it won't you know equalize them or normalize them in case you're concerned if you've made adjustments so you can use that method for that as well another really cool thing i like about the mixer in fl um, this is fl studio 20 is if for instance um, you know i have my effects all around here and then i have my percussion and synth synthesis <laughs> so i have my break stuff i have my effects i have my synthesizers i have some percussion all here now let's say i want to move all of these um, a cool way is again using that method hold left control left click and with these selected click and hold the alt button and with that held down use your arrow keys left and right and you can actually move not only an individual uh, mixer strip but you can move the entire thing this gives you a lot of freedom to then reorganize and shuffle what you want maybe you want the effects at the end maybe you want everything moved to the left and um, again this will really help with your organization let's talk about copying uh, presets so let's say you know here we have uh, let's bring up an example so maybe you have a complex FX chain maybe you have something going on like here there's a lot of effects going on and you're thinking hey I want it copied over to something now let's go to something else more simple. I don't want it to, to crash. So here there's nothing on this channel. Here we have an instance of kickstart. And um, let's say the volume is lower like that and we want it to be the same. Now we could open, you know, save a mixer track state or open it. But a really cool method is if you right click on the one, so 32, file, save as. Now click and hold that and you'll see this box shows up and drag it to whichever mixer track you want. So in this case, we wanna take it from 32 to 33. So release your left click on 33, and there we have it. It copied Kickstart with the preset that I made. It'll basically clone it. Now it does change the name, so if the name was you know, Jar Jar 
Binks or something, we would have to put our old name again. So be mindful of that. Um, but it's going to help you a lot if you have like a channel strip with tons of EQs and uh, compressor and you don't want to do that all over again. And it can be very useful if let's say you have two singers, okay? You have like a male and a female singer and you've made a great effects chain for the male, but you're thinking, okay, I want to carry over what I did, but I don't want to have to redo all the stuff. I want to tweak some stuff and then you can just do that and then make adjustments to the EQ, adjust it for the female singer. It's really gonna improve your workflow. Let's talk about um, working in a smaller project because you know everyone works differently. You know, you don't have to, you know, some of the best tracks are made with very little mixer tracks. Some people like to work with a lot of mixer tracks. There's no right or wrong. Art is subjective. If it sounds good, it's good. How can you make the mixer um, easier to work with? Right up here, it says compact, and you can actually switch this from compact to many different modes, which um, I recommend experimenting with. So I was on compact. There is like compact alternative where it puts the names at the bottom and you just have a different focus. And I usually go between either compact for this one or wide. Wide is really nice because you get uh, a really nice view of the panning and also the merging of the channels if you want to make it mono or widen it so let's reset that so definitely take a look there now the reason why my mixer is very colorful is that there is a setting actually if you guys go to view and go to colorful mixer you'll see high medium or low and that will reduce the intensity of the colors maybe it's more maybe it's less that you prefer i really like it on high because i can distinguish what i'm working with so that's also something that I recommend experimenting with and it will help you. Um, some other things that I want to touch base on are moving things outside of the mixer to the left or to the right. So what does that mean? So let's say we have a really important thing like the kick. The kick is very important in EDM. Almost all the time the kick is so dominant and it needs to just punch through the mix, right? And maybe we want to tell ourselves, you know, I want this to be like, it's special. It needs to go in a special place. You can right click um, the instance that you have. So channel one. And if you hit dock, there's three options. Middle is the default. You can put it on the right, which generates kind of this new tab. Okay. But you can also put it on the left. And that's cool because it's kind of reserved. It's still on channel one. You know, it could still also be like, channel 31 that you're putting there but the idea there is that you can kind of see it and you know visually it's really important one of the reasons that i use fl is that it's it's not an eyesore it's very nice to look at i enjoy working in it and um you know i respect all the other daws at the end of the day it's just a tool and it's really up to the user but something like this can really help. Um, I was doing that in the early project because the kick and the lead were really important. And then I was like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna put them back. I really don't need them docked to there. But you know, if that helps you, if that uh, improves your workflow, might wanna consider doing that. In regards to saving and, and uh, transferring your presets, how I mentioned, you know, saving them and moving them over and dragging them, you can also do that to the master as well. So you could also take this file, save as, and slap it on here, and now it's put the limiter. So the master is still gonna operate in the same way. Last but not least, of course, there are other things to consider on the mixer that are very beneficial. Uh, when I was younger, I never realized the simplicity of some of the buttons that are below here. So for instance, if you ever wanna check to see if your mix is okay in mono, you can absolutely do that by just moving this all the way to the right and it will merge everything in the center channel and then you can see if there's any phasing issues or sounds that have been lost um, again that's something that I recommend doing uh, listen to see how it sounds in mono because a lot of clubs a lot of PA speakers will play back in mono the last thing you want is that your track sounds great on headphones you go out in the club and it just sounds completely different so Listening in mono is really important. I've really talking about that a lot. 
Another cool thing I like about the mixer is just the, the quick disable and enable of effects. So let's say we want to turn off our effects. Um, in the past, I would be like, okay, I'm going to turn this off and this off and this off and one by one, but you don't need to do that. All you need to do is just click this yellow button. The yellow button also demonstrates to you which channel strips have effects. So for instance, the ones from 35 all the way up to 52 are actually not using any effects at all. So that's also a visual cue to show you um, whether it has anything on it or not. So something to consider uh, when you're working on. Another thing that I like to use is this on, it might be different on the different modes, is this, the view extra. I have that on and the view extra shows you additional settings, um, polarity, switching of channels, stereo separation, which is what I'm using on the kick. It's merging everything. So that's something that you want to consider. And um, yeah, these are pretty much what I use with the release of FL Studio 20 plugin delay compensation is great. So I recommend just leaving it on automatic. You can also turn that off and just set um, either if you're using all zero latency plugins and you're not worried about that, which is rare, but I recommend you leaving on automatic because FL Studio Image Line, they've really improved their plugin delay compensation. I don't think there will be concerns with uh, complex routing, but nonetheless, I didn't want to go too much into routing and all that in this tutorial. Just wanted to show you guys, you know, tips and tricks you guys can use to improve your workflow. And basically what I do, anything from merging channels to rearranging things, um, small things like this can go a long way in improving your workflow. And uh, if there's things that I missed, feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think and um, how you guys go about improving your workflow with the mixer in FL. So guys, that uh, brings this tutorial to a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed these uh, tips that I share. I use them all the time when I'm working, especially the coloring and rearranging of things because um, in the past, I used to get very lazy with FL Studio. And that's also part of why I use 32-bit FL Studio because it really disciplines me to keep my VSTs minimal, to keep purging unnecessary things. And... Um, these tips and tricks really go a, a long way to keep adding to your workflow and to improve them. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. Remember to drop a comment, uh, leave a like, smash that like button, stay subscribed for future content. Remember to hit the notification bell so you guys are notified of all my future uploads. And I will see you guys in the future video, future vlog, future tutorial. Keep making them gains. I'll see you guys.